Osmotic pressure is a colligative property, which means it depends only on the number, not the identity, of the solute particles in an ideal solution. It can be represented by this equation, pi equals mRT, where pi equals the osmotic pressure in atmospheres, m equals molarity of the solute, r equals the gas law constant, and t equals the temperature in Kelvin. We can apply this equation to a variety of circumstances, such as this example problem. So in this case, we have 1.00 times 10 to the negative third grams of protein dissolved in water. And this makes 1.00 milliliters of solution. The osmotic pressure, as we calculate it to be, is found to be 1.12 torr at 25 degrees Celsius. Now here, we want to find the molar mass of the protein. So let's start out with what we're given. Um, the osmotic pressure is in torr, so we want to convert that to atmospheres, and we do that by the conversion factor 1 atm per 760 torr. For R, it's going to be 0 0.08206, and T, it's going to be 273.15 plus the degree Celsius value, and that's going to equal out to our Kelvin temperature. So, plug and chug. We have pi osmotic pressure here. M is what we don't know. And it's going to be the molarity of the solute, which will help us to find the molar mass. R, we know. And K, we calculated. So, plug and chug. We find M out to be 6.01 times 10 to the 5 moles over liter. Now, in this case, we're trying to find the molar mass, and molar mass is going to be given in grams per mole. So we have moles per liter, it's in grams per mole. What we can do here is flip that over and have 1 liter over 6.01 times 10 to the negative 5 moles. Now, we have to ask, what else are we given? Well, we're also given the grams, and we're also given milliliters. So we have the grams here, and we change the milliliters to liters. Okay, so we have grams and liters. So we, what we can do here to get from here to here is cancel out units. So in this case, the liters cancel out, and the grams and moles stay, and that's how we find the molar mass. But we have to ask, what do we mean by molarity of the solute? The problem here is that different ionic substances and substances as a whole have a whole lot of different solubilities. For example, we might ask, what concentration of NaCl in water is needed to produce an aqueous solution isotonic with blood? And the pressure in this case would be 7.70 atm at 25 degrees Celsius. So again, rewrite your um, equation. But this time, instead of m, write m total. In this case, total means the total particles of solute available. Or you can also rewrite it like this. So again, plug and chug, we're given the pressure, we're given the R, and we're given the T, and M comes out to 0.315 moles over liter. So that's the amount of solute particles available. Now, we know that for sodium chloride, it's going to dissociate into individual ions, individual sodium and individual chloride ions, because of the water polarity pushing them apart. And because it starts off as one and then splits off into two particles, we have to understand that when we talk about the total solute particles, we're talking about the particles that um, dissociate as a result. So in this case, because we have two ions per formula unit, and we want to find not the total, but rather the concentration of NaCl, what we're going to do is take the total solute, divide it by two, and that's going to equal out to the molarity of the NaCl we have initially only. That's going to equal out to 0.158 molars. So if you want to think about it like this, we have our total solute particles that we calculated, and each one is going to be individually this and this. And because this NaCl dissociates into this and this equally, it's going to basically equal our total solute particles divided in half. Now, talking about solubility in general, we have to always consider when we put them in, how much are they going to dissociate. For example, NaCl, if we put in one molar, it's going to dissociate into two individual ions. And this will result in a total molarity of two molars. If we want to talk about potassium sulfate, 
um, it's going to look like this. Splitting up into three individual ions, sulfate and two potassium. And together, they're going to equal three molar. If we want to talk about um, acidic acid, understand that it's going to be a weak acid, so it's not going to dissociate it as well. So if we start with one molar, we're actually going to end up with approximately one molar. So, because it's a weak acid, but we have to remember there's still a little bit of dissociation, so this number of one molar isn't exactly perfect, but it's considered to be our expected value. Now, as for which um, acids are strong and weak, we have a list here from the UC Davis Chem Wiki of a list of strong acids. So this includes HCl, HBr, HI, HClO4, HNO3, and H2SO4. If they aren't included in this list, just assume them to be weak. So what we covered here was solubility and also osmotic pressure.